All right, this is Joe Johnson, energy coach for entrepreneurs, and I am joined today by Mike Rostowski, who is the men's coach. So I'm very excited to have Mike with us today. Uh, inspiring men is really what I'm all about, and I know that's what Mike's about as well. So, Mike, thank you for so much for coming on with me today. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. So, how you know, how'd you get to be the men's coach? What's what's the story behind that? How'd you decide to work with men, and you know, why why do you work with men specifically? Yeah, um, good question. So, I um, I've been coaching for for a while. So, I I've, I've I've always been really into leadership. So, like as a as a teenager, I would I would read books like. I was a huge nerd. I, I still am a huge nerd. I, I think most of us are. Yeah, me too, definitely. <laughs> in this space. And I, I stumbled onto like the leadership management section and, and I was reading books written for like senior executives on teams and, and just from, from a young age I I asked myself that question, like, why not be the best version of myself? Like like why not just try and be healthy and have great relationships and, you know, be a good leader and just like like why not? Like it's it's my life and and I can choose whatever path I want. So, like, why not be awesome? So I, just from a young age, like, I was, I was really involved in school, and I was kind of like that, like, annoying kid who's, like, involved in everything and president of everything. And, um, but I, when I look back, like, it was much more from, like, an ego base, like, just, like, just, just doing it, like, for the sake of being president. But just, like, as I, I guess as I've learned, um, just more about life and, just like as I, as I learned, um, just what's important to me, I I saw this this like huge gap because um, it was a huge gap in in my life of like what does it mean to be a man and mm-hmm. um, you know I I never really got a lot of that from my dad my my dad and I I'm 32 and we, we've never we still have never talked about sex and we've like <laughs> we've never talked about like really deep like like purpose and just like what does it mean to be a man I mean he was a like amazing father and was always there and you know like just an incredible man but we never had that it's like I never had like that role model or never had those 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 conversations um so I am you know I'm a I'm a nomad I've been traveling for the past two years straight running my business coaching speaking doing events and just I've talked with a lot of guys and that and these like just real common pain points come up of just like what is it to even be a man and you know it's like I I'm a man who's sort of on the path, like either a spiritual path or an entrepreneur or someone who's even someone who's, who's trying to get, get healthier and like not drink beer every weekend with his, you know, with his friends and, and it gets kind of lonely. And, um, and just for, for me, it's like, I, I really want to be like an advocate for men and someone who, who supports men in a, in a big way. Cause when I was growing up, there was really like nothing that, you know, nothing there for me. So, and in terms of um, just like a marketing perspective, like when I when I finished my my life coach training, um, you know, it's like we have these modules on on marketing and like what's your niche going to be and who are you going to work with and you know, so most life coaches are are women and mm-hmm. you know they'll niche out really like a real small niche of like I, I work with you know single moms ages twenty to thirty and um, and for me I looked at the marketplace and I was like. I think I'm gonna work with men. Like <laughs> no one's like no one's really like stepping up for men. Like and just a lot of these conversations don't even happen. So um, so that's that's just kind of like a bit about like, what what led me to become the the men's coach. It's just because one I never had that growing up, and just everything I had to learn on my own. And 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 two, just like I I didn't see anyone like really kind of stepping up for men and and, and serving men in this space. Mm-hmm. You know? And I know you've written a little bit recently about how it's kind of not okay for men to ask for help in our culture, you know? Mm-hmm. That might be some of the reason, too, why there's not as much coaching for men and men aren't reaching out. You know, what What can you say about guys not wanting to ask for help? Yeah, it's, um, you know, like, even for me with, with all my tools and, like, everything that I've learned, it's, like, it's still hard sometimes. And mm-hmm. um, I'm working on, like, my biggest project ever, the the conference for men right now and 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 it is totally stretched me like as a man and as an entrepreneur just like as a, as a human being and, mm-hmm. and and a big part of that is like learning to ask for help and learning to like delegate because like there's no way I can do this on on my own and um I I think what what holds us back from asking for help it's 
it's all that social programming of, you know, when, like, maybe it's, it's like the chat that our fathers gave us when we were young, and he said, you know what, son, to, to be a man is, like, don't ask for anything from anyone, and don't cry, and, and if someone just disrespects you, you fight him, or just, you know, something mm-hmm. like that, um, and, and just, and, like, the, the, the hardest thing for, for most men to do is just, just to share, like, share their feelings, or, like, share what's, what's coming up for them, mm-hmm. um, because, right, when we were young, if we, if we cried, like, the other boys on the playground made fun of us, or, you know, like, if, if we cried in front of our dads, he, he might have, like, yelled at us for crying, and, and, and he might sort of suck it up, or, like, be a man, so, um, so there, there's a lot of pro- programming that, that holds men back from this, just from being human, just from expressing emotion, just from being able to, to cry when something's sad, or, like, even, like, really, really express joy when mm-hmm. they're, when they're really happy, so, mm-hmm. um, a, a huge piece of my work that I do with clients is just, it's, like, opening that back up, like, opening their hearts, because, um, because for me, it's like I know by doing this work, my life is so much more rich now. Because I'm like I'm able to just experience things like almost almost in like HD, like compared to black and white. Like mm-hmm. every meal, every connection with someone is just is so much richer. But that's because I'm showing up and and I'm able to just kind of like feel into it. Mm-hmm. And what do you recommend? You know, that's something I struggle with as well is is opening up and sharing my feelings and things like that. And something I work with guys on as well. You know, what What do you recommend in that moment where we're kind of not really wanting to share, or kind of feeling afraid to share? You know, is there any ways you have your clients, any support structures you put in place for them or anything that you have them keep in mind at that moment? Or? Um, so, so one question I like to ask is like, what's the risk if you do this? Like, mm-hmm. What's the risk if you share? Oftentimes we're like, well, I mean, like, nothing really, like I'm not going to die. Mm-hmm. You know? This person might reject me, but um, I, I, I kind of talk a lot about death too, which 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 seems kind of kind of morbid, but mm-hmm. it's um, like death has been one of my greatest teachers. Like a, mm-hmm. a big reason why I even do this work is my uh, my mom passed away like two and a half years ago, and mm-hmm. and and for me that was that was the uh, just like the huge um, like that crucible moment where I, I really started looking at words and. And ask, like asking those questions that people on their death that ask, but like it's like you know, like what's my purpose, or you know, it's like what am I doing with my life, or mm-hmm. what would I do if I had a month to live? Just asking those like those really deep questions about life, and 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 through that, you know, you, you realize like well, this life is so precious. Like like why would I not totally like open my heart up, you know, in, into love? Like why would I not? Be invested in this relationship mm-hmm. like why would I not just like, totally speak my truth like with my friends and my parents and or my clients or my girlfriend or my wife and it's like like what's a what's a risk and and really nothing is at risk but just just a better life you know mm-hmm. just just living a life a, a, a congruent life instead of one with like all these different masks and facades where you're just like lying to everyone and mm-hmm. uh, just just a huge piece of of my work, and, and I'm sure probably yours, is just getting guys to one congruent life, where they're like, where they're not lying, where there's no open loops, and there's no secrets, and and once a man gets his life, they're like, it's a very powerful place to be, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and then everything else, just, like, everything else that he was striving after so hard, like, like sex, or money, or just, like, everything else just starts to pour in, because so his people are attracted to you, trustful people who are, you know, rooted in you know, authenticity and mm-hmm. integrity and, mm-hmm. you know, honesty is like the greatest path of jack, which almost seems counterintuitive, but, hmm. you know, it's like when you just tell the truth to women just about who you are, and, like, these are my desires, or, like, I want to ask you out on a date, you know, like, just, they're like, oh, wow, like, sure. Mm-hmm. So does that mean if, if we're nervous about asking the women on a date, we should, we should tell her that too? Yeah, oh, dude, totally, so I, I love that you said that, I, I've been, you know, like, I've been in front of, like, a, you know, a girl that I'm talking to, and, and I'll just say, I'm like, yeah, I, I just, I'm a little bit nervous right now, and, and just every time I've said that, it's always gone well, mm-hmm. and I've also, like, really, like, you, like, you just seem, like, super confident all the time, and mm-hmm. they're like, that's really sweet, or, or just, it, it brings a deeper level of, of connection, and, um, 
for for me, it's like the, the truth is everything. And when you can sit in your truth, it's like why if if someone rejects like rejects you because you're just being who you are, then that's that's fine, you know. And I've been rejected by thousands of people, just you know, hundreds of women and you know, I, I'm always reaching out for things like to go speak at conferences or you know, even even coaching clients, like there's I get rejected all the time, mm-hmm. but like if you're not getting rejected on a regular basis, like it's not asking for enough. Like you're not mm-hmm. asking for for what you need or for what you uh, desire. So mm-hmm. yeah, just I like I, I say stuff to women that seems so crazy and so counterintuitive. Like I'll just like in the first couple seconds, I'm like, you're really beautiful. I just like I I need you to know that, and no, or you know, it's like I want to kiss you. Like is that okay? Or just you know, and and. And what's funny is like it just it just cuts through all the all the BS and and it brings both of us to like a much deeper level of of connection and you know even if it doesn't work out it's like there's this deep level of like, mutual admiration and and respect and we're able just to go deep really quick instead of going on like like five coffee dates and like being in the friend zone and you know like that's that was my old life of just wanting a girl so bad and just like trying to be around her and be your friend and then and then getting hurt when she like went and dated someone else and mm-hmm. you're like oh man like I put so much work into that but but I didn't like I was lying to her the whole time because I wasn't being truthful about what my intentions were mm-hmm. and how about uh, you know how about for guys who are in relationships right now what what kind of advice and coaching do you give to them um, same thing just tell the truth mm-hmm. so, so I mean never ever ever And, and also, like, tell, tell the truth more about what you appreciate about your wife, your girlfriend, or your partner. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's there's probably multiple times where it's like, you'll, you'll look at your girlfriend from across the room and just think, like, God, like, she's so beautiful, or, or she'll, she'll do something that's so thoughtful, like, like, make you lunch, or do something. And, and in your mind, you have the thought of, like, gosh, like, I love her so much. But you don't say it. <laughs> so, um, so I something that I do a lot with the guys it's like when you have that thought just just openly say it just mm-hmm. just like when she's doing something good like in the bedroom or like out of the bedroom or just like just like anything that she does that like makes you feel alive or lights you up or makes you feel good just tell her and say like like I really appreciate that you know that thing that you did for me or um just like like I love it when you when you do that or just you know you look you look so beautiful in that dress because mm-hmm. you think those thoughts all the time but mm-hmm. Like why don't you say that? And um, and and the more that you, you know, like the more that you praise her, and the more that you just like accentuate the positive, like literally, just the more like she will become more beautiful because she'll be just full of love, and and she'll be more radiant, and you know, and your connection will be even deeper. Um, so so just yeah, just just really be just be so firmly committed to the truth, and 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 also just have those open conversations when. Like you know when when you're not you know when you're not connected. Like you know when there's something that like you're holding back or like you can tell she's upset. Just just go 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 into it. You know, and mm-hmm. say like I'm I'm experiencing you as just a little bit upset right now. And you're like is there something you want to talk about? And because because um, you can either you know get totally clear or you can continue to operate you know, just like like with that with that barrier to. So, mm-hmm. so for me, it's like I want to get that stuff out of the way as soon as possible, just so we can come back to like that 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 deep connection. Mm-hmm. So just like have courageous conversations about what's not going so well, and like just and then tell her all the time just how amazing she is, because because she is amazing. It's like why would you be with her if she wasn't? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a great point. Just you know, we're so quick to criticize somebody or say something negative about them, but. Saying what we appreciate some about someone, or acknowledge about someone, or you know what we're grateful for about someone is is so so much less common. You know why do you why do you think that is that we're so hesitant to say positive things about somebody else? Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's um, I think we we tend to focus on the on the negative. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I'll I'll get a. I'll get like 70 Amazon reviews or something. 
reviews on my book, and I'll go like straight to like the bad mm-hmm. ones, and like, you know, almost almost ignore the good ones, and you know, I'll, I'll get like, fifty comments positive on something that I wrote, and then but the one bad one, you're like, oh, it'll just you know, it'll really get to me. I I think there's there's a piece in us that we're very growth minded, right? And we're we're always working on on the on the pieces of us that could be a little bit stronger or a little bit better. So it's mm-hmm. like oftentimes just try and try and look to like optimize that, and try and make it better. Um, which is which is definitely like it's a path that um like I, I constantly choose the the path of growth. Like when given two choices I always choose the path that leads to the most growth. But I think at the same time it's really important to to just feel feel grateful for, for who you are and like look at your life and realize that, that damn like I have a pretty impressive body of work and um, I mean everyone watching this interview right now like you have a really impressive body of work and like just to make it like just to make it to, to this moment like all the stuff that you've gone through all the pain and the trauma that you've overcome all the amazing successes that you've had just like that's some really incredible stuff mm-hmm. um, so just to like take a take a moment to like look at everything And then showing up in the world like that, um, instead of always like beating yourself up and being like, "Oh, I, I could be better at this. I could be better at that." So, it's that, it's that mix. It's that mix of like growth and gratitude of, you know, always trying to trying to be better, but realizing that like who I am at this moment is, is perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of wanting to be better, but not not needing to improve yourself. Not having that feeling of not being good enough, mm-hmm. which is. I know it comes up for me, and it comes up for a lot of people that I talk to as well, which is, I don't know where that comes from either, but it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's like the core, that's like the core belief that like really pulls us back. Like mm-hmm. the, when I look at all of the stuff and all of my clients, it's, I think it's like, I'm not good enough, and I'm not lovable. Like, everything seems to come down to, like, one of those two. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not tall enough, or I'm not wealthy enough, mm-hmm. or, experience enough or just all, all those lies um, but I think what, what a lot of people don't realize is like we're all making it up as we go so like President Obama is like making up being president and you know, it's like I'm making it up as I go but being the men's coach and like you're making it up as you go it's like we're all just doing the best we can mm-hmm. in every moment like there's like even the most like successful people like like Richard Branson you know, and warm up, but like they're making it up as as they go. Like there's no there's no like roadmap or some guide on like how to be Richard Branson. Mm-hmm. It's just doing the best we can. And, mm-hmm. and you know, if you look at Branson, he's had so many failures, um, but it's it's all those failures that have you know, that have made him just an amazing success. Mm-hmm. And do you have any practices that you recommend to kind of combat that belief? Those beliefs of I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable. I really like the uh, the work uh, mm-hmm. the work entire team. Mm-hmm. So if you go to uh, the work dot com, mm-hmm. she has some like worksheets, and there's these these four questions for uh, reversing living beliefs. I, I use that a lot in my in my coaching practice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I'd say the the work and just just even like even writing down sometimes for clients. I for homework, I'll say I want you to write a list of like. 25 reasons that you're great and like 50 reasons why you're awesome and mm-hmm. I'll just send that to me for your homework and mm-hmm. um, you know and I'll do it and I'll look at it and I'll be like oh my gosh like this, this guy's way more accomplished than me like this guy makes me feel like a champion and, right. like, you know, and, and this is the same guy he's coming to me because he has like no confidence and he like thinks he's nothing and mm-hmm. um, yeah just we, we always tend to and either either forget our successes or just try and downplay them for mm-hmm. For some, just like wanting to be humble, um, but that like that really doesn't serve us at all. So I, like I, I fully invite you to like step into your greatness and and just and just own that because that's like that's the truth of who you are. Mm-hmm. That sounds like uh, gratitude is important for you as well. Just gratitude for where you're at at this moment and all the things that you have, all the gifts that you have. Yeah, yeah. Just just taking and and gratitude is just taking. Taking a, a little little break from your day to to look at the things that you have and, and the things that that you have to be grateful for. And there's so many. I mean, you could make a list of 100 right now. Like even 
even if you're homeless on the streets, like you could, uh, you know, you could be grateful for like the bottle of water in your hand, or grateful for the sun, or mm-hmm. grateful for the shoes that someone gave you. Like there's mm-hmm. just there's so many things, and and that's just it's like one of the most powerful practices for 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 me, like for pulling me out of depression or out of this kind of a funk. It's I'm like you know I just need to sit down and realize what I'm grateful for, and then mm-hmm. I always feel good afterwards. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh yeah. I, I'm, I'm not doing that bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I know in addition to the relationships, one of your specialties with guys is, uh, you know, their careers and their work and what they're up to in the world. You know, what, what can you say about, about work and business and, and that area of life? Yeah. So the, so the things that are, that are important is, is one, just to have some sort of purpose. Like just like really, like right now my, my purpose is to make the world a better place one man at a time. And that's mm-hmm. what, like every cell in my being is fully committed to that. So like when I when I write something or like the way that I show up in the world or the way that I support men, um, that's that's everything that I'm that I'm going for. Um, and and I think the second thing that's important is is like take a stand. Um, so I, I I love that you're the energy coach for for entrepreneurs. Like that's I I hear it, I get it, and everyone that that hears it like they know who you are. So if they have a friend with who's an entrepreneur and who's having trouble like getting out of bed and trouble with, with energy, like mm-hmm. they say, okay, I'm going to send them to Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I say take a stand, like take a stand for your brand, like take a stand for your customers, take a stand for, for who you serve. Because um, if I was just like Mike the light coach, and then it's like, oh, who do you help? I, I, you know, I, I help people do, do coaching. And, and there's a lot of coaches that like they're just they're they're coaches and um and it's not bad and, you know they're really talented coaches but how do you differentiate that in in the marketplace as there's thousands of, of of coaches so when i when i look at my friends who've been really successful in, in business they've they've taken a stand and said like this is who i am like this is who i serve and here's how i how i help them mm-hmm. um and then from there like all their all their marketing materials all their top just from that, mm-hmm. it's really easy to send them referrals because you know it's like, all right, I know exactly who that person serves. So, mm-hmm. so just like really take a stand in your business and, and be crystal clear about about who you serve, how you help them. Um, I know a lot of people are are afraid that they're going to lose out on business, but it's totally the opposite. Like when you do that, then you get way more business, and you get the business that you actually want, like the mm-hmm. the clients that you actually want to serve. Helping them in the problems that you have the expertise and mm-hmm. able to help them. Mm-hmm. And what about for guys? You know, guys who don't own their own business or they're not really into coaching. You know, they're just kind of working their job. They're nine to five. Kind of what? What? What do you say to those guys? Um, I mean, I I say to them like, if, if you're happy, then that's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like um, there's there's ways to to create meaning and purpose in your life. Like without doing the whole like lifestyle design, four hour work week, put your job, live in Thailand thing, um, it, it it works for some people. Like it it works for me. I'm so thankful and grateful for the life that I live right now. Being able to travel the world and run my business from my laptop, like it's amazing. Mm-hmm. But you know, for for someone who you know has kids and has a home and has a mortgage, like you might not be able to do that. But there's elements of lifestyle design that, that you can incorporate into his life. Mm-hmm. So maybe just being like a little bit more flexible, or you know, like maybe selling some stuff that he really doesn't need, and just kind of you know maybe taking more of that minimalist approach, and maybe like val- valuing experiences instead of material possessions, and you know spending more time with his family, and you know, doing more like creative stuff on the weekends, like just going camping or you know doing things and. So just expending like going shopping and spending a ton of money on stuff. So there's there's you know, there's always something that like you can be doing, just just little tweaks to to bring more more love or bring more joy into into our lives. And um, you know, oftentimes that's you know, even though the the whole like trash your pipe and start over you know, start over, burn the bridges, like that works for a lot of people, but you know, sometimes just like slow incremental growth to get to, to to something that is closer to your ideal life is, is just as effective. And um, ultimately, like ultimately, it's your life. So like, 
don't listen to something that, that I say or that Joe says or don't read some blog and be like, oh my gosh, I should do that. Like, really think about, like, what like what story do you want to tell at the, you know, at, at the end of your years? And, like, you're the creator of the movie script that is your life. And, like, whatever you want to write into it, whatever experiences you want to have, like, you can have. So just get, just get really, um, yeah, just get really focused on, like, what do I want to create in my life? And then, and then just, just, just do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just do it. And that's something you've done recently is, is you decided to create a conference. That's something you just decided to do. What's, what's, what's that about? What, what sparked the idea for the conference? Um, so as I, you know, like as I, as I travel and I go to events and I've, I've met a lot of just really, really awesome men. And, um, I, I'm very lucky. Like I have dozens of men in my life. who so like, I got off the phone and like, I say, I love you. I'm like, like that. And, and they're, they're like my brothers, they're literally like my brothers when I see them, just big bear hugs, and mm-hmm. like they're just, and we have this like crazy level of connection and, and openness, but, but that's because that's how I show up, like I, I pretty much pull my heart out, I, I'm, I'm not afraid to share when I'm feeling scared, or I'm not afraid to be vulnerable, so I've, I've brought men into my life, so we're, 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 we're also like that, and, mm-hmm. and I just, and it's so amazing but, like, as I meet men and I travel, like, I'm starting to realize it's so rare. And some of the, the biggest pain points for men are around connection with other men. Like, just, like, real conversations with men instead of talking about, like, the sports or the weather or, like, boobs, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm really talking about life and talking about things. And, um, and, and it's funny because, like, men want that more than anything, yet our programming on, like, being hard or, like, just, like, having it together or not showing weakness, that that's what's keeping men from, from having what they, like, desire the most. Mm-hmm. So a, a big part of this conference is just bringing a bunch of awesome guys together who are already on the path. So these are men who are, like, on a spiritual path, who might have read The Way of the Superior Man or done a retreat with the Mankind Project or... Maybe you're an entrepreneur who's been, you know, maybe you're a coach or maybe you're a healer or, or you're someone who's been running your own business for a while and just, you're someone who is on this path of growth and someone who wants more from life and bringing all these guys together for like a weekend of accelerated growth. I have, you know, 20 just amazing speakers and facilitators and doing some work and like really like, like diving into our, our lives on just like what, what is it to, to be a man and um, and so the, when I when I created this this conference, it was really to just create community and connection for men mm-hmm. in a safe space to like do some real work in our lives and like just like talk about the the stuff that we that we tend to hide from mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And so, how you know how is this going to be different for other conferences or experiences for men? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I um, I. I'm in the business of transformation, not information. So mm-hmm. I, I think there's, like, you can learn anything. Like, anyone listening to this, like, you can learn anything online. You can learn how to become a sushi chef, or you can learn how to break dance, or you can learn how to play guitar in three months, just on YouTube. There's information everywhere. Um, but I, it's like, I'm in the work of, of transformation, like, actually, like, changing people's lives through experiential learning. Mm-hmm. So when I look at, at, at my life, like I definitely made the most growth and I like evolved the most at at workshops or like mm-hmm. at retreats or at at a place where I unplug from life and just like under the guidance of some some teachers or you know some just like doing doing some work, um, actually doing stuff in my life, like instead of reading. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think so so how this conference is going to be different is it's not just a conference where you sit and you hear a bunch of like famous people talk about how awesome their lives are. You know, although that's very inspiring, like it it's really doesn't move people forward. So this is a conference where it's like you're going to be out of your seat, you're going to be doing like hands-on exercises in your life, you're going to be doing work in small groups, you know, with with group leaders of, of men who've done this work, like really experienced, like coaches or you know guys with decades of experience in, in men's work and. And just like really make some some forward progress in your life instead of reading a book and just like maybe thinking about doing it. Um, mm-hmm. 
so it's it's kind of like a mix between a retreat and a conference. Um, and again, it's it's an all male conference to kind of create that that sacred container of safe space for you know doing some work and having some of those uh, courageous conversations with other men who love you and care about you and have your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. And what like what kind of guy specifically would benefit most from attending? Yeah, so um, this is again like this is this is it's really for the for the guy who wants more in his life. So this is for the guy who's like probably probably listening to this interview and it's the guy who, you know, it's like you've you've read the books on um, you've read the way of the superior man, you've read the four hour work week, like you're just like you're you're into having an amazing life. So it's it's for men who want to like create the lives like just a life of their dreams and and they're probably already on the path, like they're, they've already been doing the work in their lives, and whether it's around their health, or it's around their relationships, or like it's around their business, um, but this is just, it's a space to kind of like supercharge that growth mm -hmm. um, with some amazing teachers and, and leaders, and some just awesome men from all over the world that are going to be your friends, and you are going to have this community behind you, like when you, when you walk back into your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds awesome, and I totally agree that that experiential learning causes so much transformation. I know that conferences and workshops and retreats I've been to is just some of the best stuff ever. So I'm, I wish I could be there. I, I next year I will be there for sure. But uh, so what's you know for guys who want to come, what's what's the best link that uh, they could get some more information about it? Yeah, sure. So uh, so go to conferenceformen.com. Mm -hmm. Just like all the information. Is, is there um, and and actually I'm gonna if you have any questions on this thing personally like you can you can email me um, you can just go to my website which is robstoski.com which is my my last name which you can probably find the spelling on the on the interview um, and just, just fill out like a contact form and just email me directly like I answer all of my email so I don't have an assistant and if you have questions about the conference or like if you're on the fence like just seriously email me and and I will, I will get in contact with you. And the, that's in San Diego, I believe, uh, April. What are the dates? Yep, it's, uh, it's April 25th through 27th in, in San Diego, California. Mm -hmm. And I pick San Diego because it's one of my favorite cities and an amazing place to be um, in, the, in the spring. So mm -hmm. it's, like, why not have it? The beach and the ocean and yeah, definitely. For us guys up here in the Northeast and the Midwest, that'll be a welcome, uh, welcome change. Very welcome change. But um, cool, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited to hear how it goes, and I'm excited for the guys who are going because I think that's going to be a great experience. Mm -hmm. Awesome experience. Yeah, no, it's been uh, yeah, it's been a really fun, fun and like stressful and just like amazing growth experience of just like making this and putting it together and so um again like if, if you're listening to this and you're interested just just email me i'll jump on the phone answer answer questions and would really just like love to have you there for the weekend definitely but you know kind of overall what would you say are your top three would your top three pieces of advice for a guy you know doesn't have to be about anything we talked about on the interview it doesn't have to be about women or work or anything in general, what are your top three pieces of advice for a guy who wants to, you know, just have more in his life, like you said, kick more ass and be better in all areas of life? Yeah, so um, top three, um, number one, this is around integrity, and I'm thoroughly convinced that integrity is like the magic elixir of life, like when, like if, if you can eliminate lying from your life, you'll be super powerful, super happy, I promise, I guess. That's really what coaching work is. It's, it's getting people um, aligned, like with their values and mm -hmm. closing up the loops. Um, so just be just be so committed to the truth of telling the truth to your parents and your lovers and your clients and your business partners. Um, and just you will you will just your personal power will grow so much if you can just like really be rooted in integrity mm -hmm. and, and authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, the the second thing. Um, it's a phrase I say a lot, but it's it's in the in the face of fear, take a bold step forward. So if 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 something scares you a little bit, like that's good. Like that's like that's your edge. Like that's something that you should dive into at first. Um, and just for most of my life, I was just paralyzed by fear. Like I mean, I didn't 
I didn't do anything. I was so scared all the time. I, I, and I watched everyone just have success and do things and travel and have success with women and just, and I just, and I was like so angry and I was kind of a hater, but like really I just, I wasn't doing the work and like I just, I wasn't going for it. So, so if, if you're, if, if there's something in your life that you're resisting or a little bit afraid, just dive into it head first and just, it's going to work out. Just every, like, either you're going to have a success or, you know, you might have a failure and there's no such thing as failure. Like failure is just, just feedback, but, um, you know, just feel so, like, so alive that, damn, like, I, I really went for it. Um, so, so that's the second thing is in the face of fear, take the bold step forward. Um, and the third is just, just open your heart. And, um, I know this is, like, it's something that's, it's a concept that's, that's, that's really hard to explain, but just, like, give yourself permission to be human. Like, give yourself permission to, to cry and permission to feel great joy and just, like, really allow, like, allow emotions to, like, run for you. And, um, just because that, that's part of being, being human. And you can either carry around all the sadness and carry around sadness in your body for, for years, or you can give yourself a chance to feel it and, and then process it. And then let it go, and you'll and you'll feel so much lighter. And you'll just be just such a higher functioning human being if you just allow yourself to process your emotions in, in real time instead of like fighting them or like or stuffing them back down into your body like like most men do. So um, really, it's integrity. Like take big leaps and be human and cry, laugh, like just do all that stuff. Is um, you know it's. It just leads to such a richer quality of life. Mm -hmm. Awesome, incredible advice. Well, I'm definitely, uh, I'll definitely put all the links in the show notes here. Links to the conference for men. Links to Mike's website. Uh, this has been a great, uh, great to spend time with you today, Mike. You know, just awesome advice for guys. I know anybody watching this video is is going to get a lot out of it. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and for opening your heart and, and sharing your story. And I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for creating this space. So awesome questions. It's fun. Awesome. All right. Till next time, this is Joe Johnson. I'm out as well as Mike Rostowski, the, the men's coach, Joe and Mike. Talk to you guys later.